Hi there, Aaron Smith here, the one-legged wonder, missing my right leg above the knee joint. And for those of you who don't already know me, I do also have metal in that leg. So, uh, I've got a standard mountain bike, as you can see, and uh, we're about to go on a hundred mile long bicycle ride. About half of this ride is gonna be in Oklahoma, the other half is gonna be in Texas. We're starting out in Oklahoma because, you know, I live in Gainesville, Texas, but I didn't want to have to ride over that Interstate 35 bridge. So I drove across it, came here in my truck, parked here at this border casino, and now we're about to head off down these dirt roads and end up going through a lot of little small towns. One's called Jimtown, Thackerville, Leon, Oklahoma. Then we're gonna, well, there's several that I can't remember, but I'll mention them as we go through them. We're gonna drive across the river, uh, go over a bridge, ride over the bridge on the bicycle. I drive my bicycle, I don't ride it because I'm the force that moves it, right? Okay, so then we're gonna go through Bulcher. Uh, we're gonna go through Illinois Bend, uh, Marysville. We're gonna end up back in Gainesville. All right, without further chit chat, let's go. All right, we're starting off going into the Love Valley Wildlife Management Area. Uh, it's about, it's almost 11 o'clock and I'm going 100 miles, so I'm probably going to be pushing dark by the time I finish. The sun's going to be just about down, if not down, so it's going to be a long day on the road. But I think we're going to have fun. I think it's going to go fast. It's not going to seem like a long day. We got a late start, but the sun's out and everything's pretty now. It's late june normally it's really hot but i don't think we're gonna get up over like 82 degrees today it's we've just we, i mean last week was really hot heat indexes were over 100 degrees this week or at least today it's probably close to record low low temperature so that's why i decided to go on come on over here into oklahoma and start this 100 mile ride Man, it's still really dusty. I was hoping, huh, hoping it wouldn't be so dusty. I think he took off to Leaper Lake though, so at least he's not throwing up dust in front of me now, but man, with all the rain we got yesterday, I hoped it would have cut down big time on the dust. Like we got a turtle crossing the road right there. A red-eared slider. Oh, we got another turtle crossing the road. Two turtles within like 50 feet of each other or 100 feet. Here's another turtle. 
Bigger one. Another red-eared slider. Beaver Dam is still there, damming up this little pond. So we're close to the Tiger Big Cat Sanctuary and one of the main complaints they had was that they were, there was a concern that they might taint or get this little river that goes through the property dirty, but since there are beavers living in it still, you know, and there were like a month or two ago before the feds came in and took all their animals, I think that was kind of BS because beavers wouldn't make a dam in a river flowing through a really dirty place, but they have, so. Let's see. This is the place where, you know, last time I was here, they had a bunch of lions and tigers, but they're gone now. Looks like that sign is still there though. So we're gonna ride right on up here. They haven't got a whole lot of traffic. You can tell from the, uh, you know, it rained yesterday. Since I was here last, they put a little, little bit of asphalt down. Doesn't look like a whole lot of traffic. So I'm gonna stop right here at this sign and make sure my lens is clean on my camera, but yeah private driveway still armed security looks like they're still working on construction even though their animals are gone they're babies I don't really think it's right that they were taken but you know I don't know all the details so I should probably keep my mouth shut but you know what this is my YouTube channel. I can express my opinion on it. So, all right. We got the lens cleaned on my camera. That's why I did that. I need to do that because uh, we rode past all those uh, trucks that were throwing up dust in my face. They got a little dust on the lens. Huh. Yeah. So, construction's still going on. Maybe they are gonna make some kind of amusement park. I don't know. It's their business. But uh, we're just, this is just one little stop along the ride. Didn't even need to be a stop, but it's a good place to pull over and clean off the lens on my camera. So now we're con gonna continue. We're not very far into a 100 mile ride. Nice pretty garden. Growing things that only grow in the sand here in Oklahoma. We've got Windstar back there behind us, Thackerville in front of us. Not sure what they're growing, but it may be cantaloupes and watermelons. <laughs> That's what grows best around here. Maybe some strawberries. Now we're in Thackerville. Thackerville, the first small town that we're going through on this trip. It's only, let's see, it's only just over nine miles into the ride and we've got over 90 miles to go we're gonna go through a lot of small towns some bigger some smaller than than Thackerville and there was their police that car that passed me was a police car Thackerville police car
pine trees. These pine trees smell great. Make me feel like I'm in East Texas. Oh. I woke up the dogs, man. Luckily they're far away from us, but we got two houses with dogs over here to my right. See a big old white pit bull out there. They're running this way, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna catch me. And if they do, they'll get a mouthful of more than they are ready for. They gave up. We're still in Thackerville. That was a police car. It just went past us again. You see a water tower over there to our left behind the trees. Thackerville territory. More Thackerville. Pretty spread out community, really. I don't know if you'd call it Thackerville or Love County. It's both, I think, but it may just be Love County out here. I'm sure these people say, I'm from Thackerville. So a gravel road with houses on it there. More Thackerville and Love County. Some neat looking old trucks out there. Real old. They would be cool looking to restore. Got our water tower right here. What it says over here on the other side RWD number two. Got a deer stand up in his tree here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Love County Living. Now we're gonna go over this railroad track and when we get on the other side, we're gonna get on a road that's busier than I would like. We've gotta stay on it for a little while. It's, uh, it doesn't have much of a shoulder, I don't think. You guys working on the railroad here? So we're gonna go this way. First time we've gone this way, on this road. We do have a small shoulder that waxes and wanes. Uh, it's, it may be there, it may not be there when, when I need to move over, so. We just kind of look back every now and then, make sure there's no traffic coming behind us. Turn right here. This will take us over 35, I believe. Unless I'm wrong, I could be, you know, you just I've never been here on a bicycle or in my car or truck. Some of these bridges, they just knock out from time to time, you know. It may not be there anymore, just because it was here. Doesn't mean it's here now. We'll see you real soon. Uh-oh. Hey, dog. Hey, dog. 
Get back. Get back. Get back. Hey, how about I tap you on the head? Well, I didn't have to. He just gave up. He just wanted to bark. So that's good. Oh, I think it's going to work, y'all. I think we're going to be able to go over 35. That truck is right on the bridge, I believe. Yeah. Success. We found a success successful route over this highway. Over this interstate highway. Little bitty bridge. Big interstate highway. Yeah. We got a trash truck and trailer. Oh, are they gonna move for me? I think they are. I think they're gonna let me. I think they're gonna let me ride my bicycle on by. I appreciate that. Nice, nice people. Good representatives of Oklahoma right there. Unlike that knucklehead that revved his engine when he passed me a little ways back. Uh-oh, we got a dog over here. He doesn't see us yet. Two of them left just not even looking at us it's great oh here they come here they come <laughs> uh oh no hey hey back 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 get back back Big pit bull and pit bull mix. All right, they gave up. All right, so we're gonna take another turn. The dogs just attacked us. We're in Marietta, Oklahoma now. Kind of outskirts of Marietta. We're going around it, but we are in the city limits i'm sure or maybe not maybe we're not in the city limits but these people are marietta people those dogs people with the dogs are marietta people pretty horses nice person in the car going slow for me we're still around marietta oklahoma Cutting horses. We got some, looks like mules up here, half donkey, half horse. Otherwise known as jackasses. Four jackasses. Yeah, that's what they are. Half horse, half mule. Or half horse, half donkey equals mule. Old mama cow. An old one. How you doing, Mama Cow? This is an interesting gravel road. It's pea gravel, real small pea gravel that we're going over right here. We are pretty much directly west of Marietta, Marietta, Oklahoma. We're about to get up to this road up here and then we'll turn. We'll turn west. We'll be directly west of downtown Marietta. And then we're just going to head on west. I was afraid 
think this road wouldn't have a very good shoulder, but boy, it has a good big one. That's great. So we're gonna hope it stays big and we're gonna go this way, head west for a little ways. I think we got a dead buzzard in the road right here. Yep, that's what it is. Somebody hit a buzzard while he was trying to eat something dead on the road. He became dead on the road himself. That's what we're trying to avoid. We don't want to become dead on the road. So we pay attention. Dunbar Cemetery. That's what we're looking at over here. Dunbar. I think that's the next town we go through. Yeah, that's it. Dunbar. So we're about to get to Dunbar here in a few miles. That's their cemetery. Yeah, we're coming into Dunbar. Dunbar, Oklahoma. If we keep going, we'll get to Falconhead and Ryan. Turn left, we'll go to Bernieville. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through Bernieville. Bernieville. Falcon Head, one stop. That'd be a good place to stop and get some stuff that we need. Get some extra water if I needed it. So we're actually turning right here onto this road. I'm just cutting across this little driveway oh I don't like this road it's a, a state highway we won't be on it too long though we're gonna go until we get to Bernieville and then we're gonna turn right Looney Drive Bernieville Baptist Church Noble Research Institute Red River Ranch has Bernieville down that road <sighs> We gotta get up this hill. We're making it. Well, apparently we haven't made it quite to the center of Bernieville just yet because here's a sign that says Bernieville that way. And we've already passed what we thought was Bernieville. Maybe it's all Bernieville. That right there is Barneyville Road. Barneyville Road, the road to Barneyville. <sighs> I thought the address behind us was Barneyville Road. Oh, I thought this was Barneyville Road. <sighs> huh. So there's a little uh, informational kiosk sort of deal about Barneyville. Barneyville School District existed from 1908 to 1957. It was called District 18. No other information here, boys and girls. So we're gonna get back up on the road and keep going. Somebody on his uh, tractor mowing the lawn. Nice house back here. And there's the sign that says Bernieville. So we've now, now we're leaving Bernieville. Bernieville Central. Nice old tractor. It works. That makes it nice around here. Smiling, friendly farmer. Red River Ranch is over here. That water tower has three big R's on it. Stands for Red River Ranch. Huh. Bonanza. Bonanza Road. 
or Bonanza Ranch. I don't know. It just says Bonanza on that road sign. Huh. Red River Ranch. Looks like a big one. Big ranch. So it's Red River Ranch on Bonanza. Bonanza Road. It's like their driveway to Red River Ranch has a road name and that road name is Bonanza. So the yellow stripes in, I guess State Highway 96 ends. But the road keeps it going and the speed limit drops to 45 down from 65. Looks like we got a sawmill, hardwoods, LLC, H&P. Yep, I got a sawmill right here. Smells good like fresh sawdust. There's music going on in there. A lot of wood being stored. Lumber. Batson Road. He said Perry's Hardwoods something. Hardwood sawmill. They like to mill hardwoods. I'm sure they mill softwoods too, like pine. horse standing under that grain hopper. Some hog pens that are empty. Trailers. And we got one of these where somebody lives in a kind of an RV or a fifth wheel I guess you call those got everything they need to just live right there pretty view they've got they can see on over into Texas I can see Texas over there and I can see the windmills north of Munster they're all right over there so we're gonna go through that we're gonna go further up here and weave around and eventually cross over and go right through those windmills get home cool farmhouse right here got chickens running around this barn neat neat little area Jimtown station pipeline station we're getting close to Jimtown y'all J-I-M-T-O-W-N, Jimtown. All right, ba Batson Road is what we've been on. Now we're gonna turn on a Jimtown Road. I'm gonna ride my bike down the Jimtown Road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. Nice road, we got two yellow stripes in the middle. We don't have a car or truck in sight. This is a really nice road. I think it's probably nice because nobody drives on it. Doesn't look like it's gotten like any traffic at all. Hardly any at all for a long time. It looks really old with no signs of wear. They're spraying something over here to the right. We don't want it to drift onto us. We got a big spray rig. It's 
spraying weeds. Probably Roundup. Going down, down into the Red River Valley. Down, down to Jimtown. Down to Jimtown. Down to Jimtown. We got a few miles till we get to Jimtown. over here mammoth donkeys big donkeys with big ears Whitson that's what it says over that gate Whitson w-h-i-t-s-o-n so we got the Jimtown fire department right here right here we got Smokey Bear Jimtown fire department fire danger today moderate that's pretty neat. They've got like a scale out there that they tell you like if it's in major drought, high risk, low risk. Right now there's moderate risk of fire. Lander Lane. They name their driveway Lander. Their last name is Lander. I've seen that a few times over here in Oklahoma. People naming their driveways a road, getting a legitimate road sign. And Naming their driveway their last name after themselves, so that's pretty cool. Ought to name my driveway after myself. Smith Lane. Smith Drive. Smith Circle. Got some Jimtown cows hanging out in the Jimtown shade next to a Jimtown house. A lot of pine cones in that tree. little garden by the road so they've even got on their barn JT Jimtown they're proud of their town name in this part of the world we haven't even reached the area that the exact spot that is Jimtown Central according to Google Maps. So we're still headed that way. Peridot or Perot Road. So we're getting on Perot Road. Jimtown Cemetery is uh, that's Jimtown Cemetery. I guess we could go over there, have a look at it. Real quick look at Jimtown Cemetery. It looks like there's a house over there, but we can look at the cemetery real quick. After we cross this cattle guard. Hi, right, so we can ride over this cattle guard into the cemetery. It doesn't say when it was established. Graves look fairly new to me, but you know, there could be old ones here too, really old ones. Farmers, yeah, there's some old ones.
Anyway, this is Jimtown Cemetery, and uh, it's a real pretty area. It's just kind of out in the middle of a field. Probably farmers buried here. I don't know. But we're going to just head on back to our main route. Just wanted to see, see it. Don't want to read everybody's tombstone. It's been uh, well kept though. Somebody mows the lawn. Ooh, I think I may got some stickers in my tire. I gotta slow down. Pick those out. Yeah, dang it. So we got uh, stickers off of the tires. They There's clearly sandburrs in the cemetery, so hopefully we don't get it flat from that, but if we do, oh well, we can fix it. No problem there. Just be a little time delay for us. But we're gonna keep chugging. Looks like a nice house right here. We've got huge tree trunk beams as the support support beams on the porch area or the overhang where they, they got a Hummer over there, an H H1 Hummer. Yeah, nice house. Nice gym town house. They probably got all that lumber to build that house from that sawmill we passed a little earlier. So this right here is Jimtown, this intersection, according to Google Maps, intersection of Zinc Road and Garnet Road. And uh, we got some, it's like a house, but nobody lives in it right here on the right. This was probably the Jimtown Central Store right here. You've got all these mailboxes. I don't know what this place is. Maybe it's a house now. I don't know. And the road turns to gravel. And we're crossing the cattle guard on Zinc Road. We've got Onyx Lane to the left. It says it's a dead end. And we're just going to go. Go straight. This is just part of the route. All right, I think I missed my turn, y'all. I think I missed it. I think it's right, right there on, yeah, I did miss it. We gotta take this road right here. It's called Nickel Road. And as you can see, it's even more remote than the road we're currently on, or that we just left. All right, well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is what our route looks like. <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna get yourself into on the ride with me, where you'll wind up. We got a sand road that we're on right now, though. Pretty much sand. All right, we're going over a cattle guard, pretty big cattle guard right here. Wow. Brrr, and Nickel Road turns into something with pavement. That wasn't too bad. It's kind of exciting. Wow. 
We are. We're in a bog now. Look at that water flowing under the road. We got cattails. This road is just right at the level of the water here. Man, we might see a snake or an alligator right here. Look at all these big old elephant ear type plants right here, flowers. I'm not sure what those are called. We're, it's like we've got a road going right through the middle of a pond here. If we, if we go off in the ditch, we're, we're in the pond. We could drown. Drown in the swamp. Got a cattle guard in the road, on a paved road. Whoa. Whoa, man. Yep, we made it over though. Cool. Cool beans. Old storm cellar to our right. The house. Got the farmer on his tractor. Another cattle guard in front of us to go over. Cows, no fence really for them. Got an interesting old irrigation system over to our right. Got a bunch of white cranes out in the field. Those are not egrets, they're big old white cranes. And we're just chugging along down the gravel road in Oklahoma, somewhere between Jimtown and Leon. Reservoirs, reservoirs over here to our right, I guess for irrigation. Yeah, they gotta be for that irrigation system. Where that water comes from. Pretty swampy area. We got reservoirs and then swamp around the reservoirs. A lot of water. Here's another cattle guard to go over right here. Another cattle guard. I guess they don't want their cows getting into the swamp. The swamps around here.
Man, I was afraid our, our road was blocked off by a gate right here as I came up over the hill, but no, we just, we got a cattle guard to go over. Now there's center pivot irrigation system out here. I guess it's just irrigating nice Bermuda grass or not irrigating anything now because it's been raining so much, but it's there for the droughts. It'll make sure this field gets the water no matter what. We're getting real close to Leon, Oklahoma. We got to take one more right and then I don't know, maybe a mile or two. We're getting close to Leon. I don't recall ever going to Leon. I'm sure I've been through it, you know, in a vehicle, car, truck. I don't remember though. It's been a long time. If, if at all. Amethyst Street. A-M-E-T-H, Amethyst. Street. All right, so it says 76 North. It's a state highway. Speed limit 55. And we are headed straight to Leon. Leon. What do we got over here to the left? It looks like an old school to me. Probably what it is, but it's. It's not what it is anymore. Richard Lee Road. It's quite a building. Brick. Looks like it's got a good enough roof. Maybe a chimney. Whatever it is, it's not being used anymore. Speed limit 45. We're gonna have to slow down. Keep the children safe. We are coming into the outskirts of Leon. Leon, Oklahoma. I guess Leon's a pretty big town because we got a ways to go before we get to the middle of it. There's houses everywhere already.
Leon Baptist Church. That's what the sign said. The building, I think that was it. Some cattle. Got a bit of a climb into Leon. Oh, I think I missed my turn. Yeah, I did. I missed the turn. I think I'll turn around, go the route that it wanted me to go. I think I was supposed to turn not here, but down here. Supposed to turn on High Ridge Street. High Ridge Street. Just trying to read this map and go where it takes me where it says to go it says to go right here but that looks like somebody's driveway right there so I don't know I'll try taking it and see what happens Ugh. it may just go past this person's house Yeah, yeah, this is a public road. So this is what Google Maps wants me to do. Go down this road. Or that's, you know, the route that I planned with Google Maps. Dog here. Hey there, doggy. Hey there, doggy. Hey there. Hey there. Don't chase me. Trying to get the true Leon experience here. Going down the roads less traveled, more lived on. lived on by the locals, less traveled by the tourists like me, if you could call me a tourist, I guess you could. So there's kind of a, some stores. I think I'll go over there, see if I can't get something to drink, some water, refill on my water. If they, these are in fact stores, you just don't know. Oklahoma. This is this is the intersection of the official Leon. That's their water tower. 
As you can see, their water tower says Leon. Real skinny water tower. So, I don't really see a place to get a drink. I'm looking for a water hose, y'all. Just a simple water hose. So this this old building has a a door that's open on the front. Anybody in there? Do not come to my house if you lose money in a machine. If you knock, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so he's got Coke machines that work, I guess. Or maybe they don't always work. We're not like desperately needing water just yet, but uh, yeah, we're just exploring. Leon, Leon, Oklahoma. Okay, so we're gonna get back on to our original route. Got three, three water bottles left that are full. So we got a, we got a while before we gotta really find it. Mm. Hmm, hmm, Y'all are getting a tour of Leon, Oklahoma right here. Nice little, comfortable little house here. Good shade trees, you can tell people live here. They've been living here a long time. We're gonna turn left right here on Blue Ridge Street. Blue Ridge Street. We were just on Church Street. A junkyard over here to our right behind the tall grass. Got an orchard right here. Pecan trees, the orchard is all around their house. Prettiest house in Leon so far. And now it's behind the trees. Behind the tall grass. Nice pecan orchard. Look at all those pecan trees. Beautiful, all in a row, all alive. Look like they're doing well. The trees are doing well. Doesn't look like any of them died over the last few years, you know, since they planted them. It's got some pretty big hills on this road just north of Leon, Oklahoma. Uh, it's like a roller coaster. Big garden over here. 
pretty horses around in the fields. We're going downhill for now, but I found that the rule of this road is that what goes down must go up, and what goes up keeps going up. So there's just a lot of uphill in that ride, big boy. Wild plum trees. Big old bunch of wild plums on this hill. Wild plum trees, anyway. Nice wildflowers in the ditch to look at as we climb. If we can't move fast, we better have a good view, or it's nice to have a good view while we're moving slow. Oh yeah, we got wild plum trees. The plums, I can't see them because I'm colorblind though, but I think there may be red plums on some of those trees now they're now they're behind us i better get over here because a ups man is coming you gonna turn around right in front of me i think so He's tired. No, he's stopping. Dropping off a package right there. All right. Now we go down this road. We're gonna head west on this road until we turn south. And then when we turn south, we'll cross the Red River. Coffee Pot Creek is the name of this creek. Little bitty creek, real big bridge. <sighs> Rubottom, are you? B O T T O M, Rubottom. That's a town a settlement that I knew we were going to come through. Never seen it before, but it looks like we got some buildings that prove that it exists. Rubottom. Rubottom is on Rubottom Road. Got what used to be a country store right here. That's what it looks like, anyway. Turner Rubottom. That's what the sign says. Rubottom Baptist Church. All these houses around here. There's Rubottom. Rubottom, Oklahoma. Sunday school, 10 a.m. worship, uh, 6 p.m. Pastor Ryan Santa. They've even got handicapped parking reserved at their church here in Rubottom, Oklahoma. Let's see what this sign says. I bet it says Rubottom. Yes, it does. So we just passed through Rubottom, Oklahoma. Cemetery, there it is. So clearly Rue Bottom's been around a while. Some of those tombstones, they look really old. It's a big cemetery. Yeah, Rue Bottom. I didn't even think about that town 
you know, when I set out on this ride, I thought, you know, we're gonna run into some towns maybe that I've never seen or didn't know about. That's one of them. Nice ro looking rock hanging out there on the cliff. Looks like a good place to sit out, have a drink. Uh-oh, got a truck coming up behind me. next town that we're going to come to is Courtney, Oklahoma, I believe. We will see. I didn't really think about that town either before we left, but I just looked on my map and it looks like it looks like that's our next town, Courtney, Oklahoma. All right, that's a pretty nice sized creek we've got right here we're going over. Leads to the Red River. I don't think I caught the name of that creek. I'm sure there was a sign back there. We've got a lot of birds flying around, swallows. It's because they have nests. They nest under the bridge. Big, nice bridge. How's it going? Good. Nice guy rolled down his window and gave me the thumbs up. He said he was doing all right. I was afraid, you know, he stopped there. I was afraid maybe he uh, had a flat tire or something. Maybe he does. He may have called somebody to help him come get him. So our shoulder ends, and now we're just climbing up the steep hill. Don't like that, topping a hill without a shoulder, but... I don't, think, I don't think the highway department's taking orders from me, so... We're just gonna take it and go with it. All right, they got a cowboy sitting on the fence waving at me. The Lesters. The Lester family, I guess, lives out here. Courtney School, 1929-1957. So this is an old schoolhouse right here, y'all. One building schoolhouse. And Courtney, Oklahoma is right here. And they were probably settlers. Well, I don't know if you call them settlers, but it was a schoolhouse during that time period. The kids who lived around here, that's where they all went to school in one big building, or it's kind of a small building. So the intersection we're coming up to is Courtney, Oklahoma. And we're gonna turn left here. And this is how we're gonna get across the Red River on this road, it leads to a bridge that goes over the mighty red. We're gonna do it. But first we're gonna see what's here at this intersection in Courtney, Oklahoma. Somebody coming up behind me. So I'm gonna let figure out what they're gonna do first, and then we'll they're gonna do what I'm gonna do. Okay. Courtney, Oklahoma. Now we're headed towards Texas. We're headed straight south, due south, on 89. South 89 Oklahoma Highway, State Highway. 
89. Eldon B. Bud Davis Memorial Highway. State line's in two miles. St. Joe is in 18 miles. We're not going to go all the way to St. Joe. We're going to hook it to the left, head east, southeast as soon as we can once we cross over. We're about to ride down into the Red River Valley. It'll be nice while it lasts, and then we got to climb out of it, but uh, I don't recall ever seeing seeing it from this view before. It's beautiful. I'm just going to chill for a while. Glide on down, and uh, we got some wild plums growing over here to the right. Wild plum trees. I don't know if the plums are ready, but they will be eventually. If they're not already. Some dogs over here to the left. They see me, they want to chase me, but they're so far away. I don't know. Yeah, they're going to go. Cemeteries. So we got Courtney Cemetery, Borland Cemetery, and Bellevue Cemetery. Borland, Bellevue are that way, Courtney's that way. On these roads up here. <clears throat> it's interesting that we, looks like we got three cemeteries so close together. One down this road, Grant lane i think it's called yeah grant road one down that way and then two cemeteries down that way we're not i can't see where they are from right here but the signs tell us that they are there if we were to go explore and really try to find them 87 oklahoma ends that's because we're crossing the Red River, ladies and gentlemen. It's a long bridge. It becomes a Texas State Highway on the other side, so... Let's enjoy the ride over this bridge into Texas. I wish the guardrail was a little taller. <laughs> I see the Red River. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful red, the mighty Red River. We got this bridge all to ourselves. All to ourselves right now, boys and girls. Look at all those swallows. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? Just nesting under the bridge. Woo! Trying to flush them out. It's one big river. One big river. The mighty red river. Boy, it's not quite as high as it was. It's gone down some. With all the rain we've had in recent weeks, I'm sure these sandbars weren't visible very recently. But uh, it's a wide, wide river. Still got the bridge to ourselves. No cars in sight or trucks. Yeah, I like to get my canoe out on this explore the Red River a little bit. It does have current though, as you can see the current right there. So you got you got to, you're at the mercy of the wind and the current on that river in a canoe. 
to a high degree. All right, so now we're over the Red River, still on the bridge, but we're over that Red River itself. Of course, this is, a lot of this is underwater. Everything we're looking down at right now is underwater when it floods, but not today. That's why the bridge is so high and wide though, because it floods big time sometimes. Got a good pecan orchard over there. Pecan orchards. That bottom sand, bottom land. Those roots, they're not very far from the uh, from the water down under that sand. So pecan trees send a tap root straight down to that water and they grow big along the Red River, in the Red River bottom. So a lot of these trees we see out here are pecan trees. And now we've got a mighty hill to climb. A mighty hill for the mighty red. It can't all be sunshine and lollipops and roses. We gotta throw that hill in there for us. Well, it's been a straight climb non-stop since we crossed the Red River. Now we've made it to the intersection where we can choose to go to Nocona and Spanish Fort if we turn right or St. Joe or Munster if we turn left. We are turning left. We're not going to St. Joe or Munster, but if we wanted to, going left could take us there as well, in addition to where we're going. I think we're gonna go through Mary Marysville to get home. Move some water bottles around. All right. Uh, now, now we're on the path to Gainesville. Illinois Bend Road. So we're coming upon Illinois Bend. It's really, really close. The Illinois Bend Cemetery is to the right. Uh, I've never been there, but he says there's a cemetery over there and this is Illinois Bend. We're coming into Illinois Bend. So yeah, there's a cemetery down there. We're not gonna go look at it today. So Illinois Bend Road was behind us, but the sign in front of us says that Illinois Bend itself, the settlement, is right in front of us. We turn left on this road to the left of us. That's how we get to Illinois Bend. I see what looks like an old schoolhouse or a church back there. Maybe we'll have a little look at Illinois Bend while we're here. Oh, we're climbing into the wind right now, so it's not easy going at the moment. Illinois Bend Community Club. All right, I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna have a look at Illinois Bend. Or a little bit of it at least. Huh. We're gonna look at their community center and it, it continues on, on down there, but we're not gonna go down there and visit the people of Illinois Bend. We're just gonna look at their community center. See what they got going on right here. Really old rock construction building right there. 
got just an area for people to congregate old church chairs they've got a podium so people can talk and sit around and listen to each other illinois bend illinois bend texas right here that building made of rock is old that i think is german construction and then we've got this right here let's look let's read what the historical marker has to say about illinois bend so this is illinois bend school located in the bend of the red river in northeast montague county that's where we're at illinois bend received an official title in 1877 and by the 1980s illinois bend was a thriving community where cotton farming um, where cotton farming swelling the population many let me get closer to it so i can put my trekking pole on it there's so many words it's easy to get lost many churches and schools were constructed in private in private homes um, prior to 1845 when the masonic grand lodge of the Te of texas set aside provisions to aid local lodges in erecting educational buildings in january 1893 a masonic building for fraternal educational and spiritual purposes was erected here during the week um, during the week the lower level so I guess it was done in one week, but the lower level was used. Okay, so during the week, the lower level was used as a one-room schoolhouse, and it was used as a church on Sundays. The original name of the school district was Valley Branch School District, number 14, due to the location near the branch, um, which feeds into the Red River. Over time, it became known as Illinois Bend School District, number 14. All age levels were taught in the same room, and the first teacher was W.O. Edwards, there was no electricity or plumbing in the school until 1945 so outhouses were erected behind the building the lower portion of the building was also the social center of the community hosting reunions weddings receptions and other group activities with the onset of world war world war ii the school closed in uh, 1944 church services in the lower level ceased in the 1920s with the establishment of local churches in uh, 1968 the building was no longer used on a regular basis however an illinois bend community homecoming was held each fall and continues today the building was refurbished by the illinois bend community club in 1987 and is a remnant of the community partnership formed with the help of the masonic lodge all right ladies and gentlemen there you have it this marker Marker is property of the state of Texas. It was erected in 2014. Ugh. All right, so we're going to get back on this road, the gravel road, which I'll have a better look at the Illinois Bend Community Center, which was once a schoolhouse. Got that area for people to congregate right there had another one back behind us and we could continue down that way into the illinois bend community there's houses buildings down there we're not doing that we're going back we're going to continue on our ride so i hope y'all enjoyed that little tour of illinois bend texas now we're gonna fight the wind. On to our next destination. Well, I guess every, the, the ride itself is our destination. The next town should be Bulcher, B-U-L-C-H-E-R. There's nothing really left of it. But we know it existed because Google says it did on our map. We're gonna go past it next. Yeah, I don't know what that, that building behind those trees there was. That's, that's probably the oldest, well, it may be the oldest, who knows? Who knows what it is? 
maybe that's the old schoolhouse before they well no the church we already know that the church and schoolhouse was built you know and it's still there but that's something something old and original maybe it's where the first teacher lived Got a road runner in the road up in front of us. Still there now, he's running away. Running down the road. Just it's funny how they just keep moving like away instead of just going to the side. If they were smart, that's what they would do, I think. But that's why they call them road runners. Still in the road. Tough hill right here, y'all, going against the wind. <sighs> we can make it. We're going to. Oh, it's not easy, but we're gonna do it. <sighs> Oh man. Close enough. I'm gonna call it a victory. little birdies We got a snake in the road, y'all. Let's see what it is. Oh, he sees us now. He's going fast. There he goes. Pretty cool little mountain right there. Be a steep stair climb if you built a house on top of it. But you'd be way up there.
there's a snake right there. Well, I'm not gonna stop and look at it. I am in a rush. Uh, I don't have anything to put it in. Well, I guess I could put it in something. See if I can catch it for a teddy. I think it's just a green non-poisonous snake, so. If I can catch it for teddy and put it in a water bottle, my son will be very happy with that. What kind of snake do we have here? Okay, it's a green snake. Uh, they were gonna catch it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's crawl. It's a non-venomous snake, so here we go. We got him. And we're gonna put him Oh, I still don't want him to bite me, so grab him right behind the head. Good looking, uh, it's called a smooth green snake. So we're gonna put him, um, put him in my water bottle. Oh, he's trying to get out. <laughs> he popped his head out. He doesn't want to go into the water bottle. I don't blame you, buddy. All right, we got him. We got the snake. All right, I'm going to take him home and my son will be delighted with him. In the meantime, my hands are kind of dirty. He did some kind of funk on my hands. So I'll wash them off. We're pretty close to the place where I can do that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, my kids, they love snakes. They're always asking me to bring them home one. So I know this is a non-venomous, very docile species of snake that's easy to pick up. It wouldn't bite me and they, they'll be very happy with it. So we'll let the snake go after the kids play with it, but there's a good chance that I saved the snake's life because it was out here in the road. It didn't show any signs of wanting to get away from me, so it probably would have just waited for, a, it probably would have just waited for a truck or a car to run over it. So I think it's a win-win situation snake is going to be entertainment for the kids they can learn from it and then they'll let it go in a place where hopefully it won't just crawl back out in the road and get run over it lives kids learn live and learn We're making it up this steep hill. For some reason, everyone wants to communicate with me on my cell phone while I'm climbing this hill. Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't gonna happen. I'm focused right now. Huh. Gotta get up this hill. Getting close. All right, you see the top. You see the other side. Ah, we made it.
I'm out humping, it's hard to get my head up and look around at the beauty sometimes. Oh, my muscles burn, but it's pretty all around me. Pretty day, pretty scenery. Oh, it hurts. My legs hurt. They're trying to cramp. Oh, I gotta slow down. Oh. So much climbing. Cows, little calves. Oh, so cute. Oh man.
We got a train over there, so I'm gonna waste some time right here. I can't beat that train. dark but we didn't get one flat tire and because of that we're gonna beat the sun well I don't know about that not really how are y'all doing good I don't know if we're really gonna beat the sun I mean it's already dipped down below the horizon but it's still light out here so that's what I'm saying we're gonna make it home before dark
right, so we rode 103.2 miles, climbed 3,627 feet, averaged 10.8 miles an hour with a top speed of 34 miles an hour. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me on this bicycle ride. Until next time, be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can join me on more awesome adventures like this one. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.